Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a much suggested puzzle. It's called Framed, I think for obvious reasons, and it's by Math Pesto. And the thing that strikes me immediately about this is how symmetrical it is. It is absolutely beautiful. And although the lines obviously have different rules attaching to them, to do this with this amount of sort of regularity is really startling. Um, now this has three stars out of five for difficulty on Logic Masters Germany as well, so it ought to be approachable today. Um, we shall see. I'll read you the rules in just a moment or two. A um, couple of things to mention first. Yesterday afternoon we released our new Patreon reward for September over on Patreon. Um, we have already had hundreds of correct entries. Very well done to all of you who've managed to solve it already. That is fabulous work. Um, the competition runs though until the 20th of September. So if you're a patron and you haven't had a go yet, do try. The feedback so far has been that it's very slightly harder than last month's, but certainly not too bad. So you'll have a very good chance of solving it. Any of you who can devote any time to it and of course if you'd like to have a go do become a patron and support the channel it's a couple of bucks a month and we'd be really grateful um, now the next thing is all about gratitude as well we need to say thank you to you guys for getting us up to 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. This is an incredible thing for us. So what we've done is we've released this, this bonus app. Um, you can get it on Android, on the App Store, get it on Steam. The way to do it is you just download an app called Cracking the Cryptic, which is our app. It's totally free to do that. And then select the 500,000 subscriber special app. That's totally free as well. Download it. There are 23 puzzles on there made by the great and the good of the Sudoku world. And they are fabulous. Honestly, the feedback we're getting on those is unbelievable. So give yourself a treat and download that as soon as you can. Um, now, I've also got to mention a couple of things today regarding anniversaries and things like that. So today, I believe, is the six-month anniversary of a couple from New Norway... Um, Marie, and I want to say Taya, I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Taya. I'm not very good at my Scandinavian pronunciation. It could be, it could be closer to Taria, maybe. Um, but hopefully you guys know who you are. And I want to say a very, very happy six month anniversary. It sounds like a good excuse for cake to me. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to Wayne and his son, AJ Dupree. Um, now, Wayne has been using his programming skills, basically, to collate some facts about the phrases that we use on Cracking the Cryptic. Um, so uh, he, he's able to tell me that apparently I've said the word R in videos 4,348 times at an average of five times a video. Um, which I'm appalled by because basically that seems to me to suggest that I basically repeat myself all the time. I've just said basically several times in a row. I apologize for this, um, uh, but I'd managed to apologize without saying the, the sorry word. And apparently sorry is the second most used word that I use. I've just said use lots of times as well. I use I use sorry four times per video on average. So that is also cliched and appalling too. Um, so anyway, Wayne's been doing some programming work on that and leaving some comments under the video. So if you want to know more about the phrases that we're using or overusing, um, look for Wayne Dupree's comments under the videos. Thanks very much to Wayne uh, for, for working on this. And it rather it's a rather nice story actually because we had an email from Wayne saying that his son AJ watched the channel a lot and would really like a shout out and we had a separate email from AJ saying that his dad Wayne has been working really hard on the channel and loves the channel and he'd really like a shout out so hopefully by um, by mentioning you both uh, you are both happy um, and you know thank you so much for spending so much time with us um, now that said and done let's get on with framed by math pesto and i shall read you the rules of the puzzle they are as follows normal sudoku rules apply uh, digits in a circle appear at least once in the four surrounding cells so that means those cells there have to contain at least one nine. They could contain more than one nine. Two nines, I think, is possible, but only two nines. Um, adjacent digits on a green line differ by at least five. So this is German whispers rules, um, which we've seen a bit recently. So imagine that cell was a two. This cell now has to be five, at least five different from two. So it's going to have to be a seven, an eight, or a nine. 
that's how the green lines work uh, oh yeah we've got entropy today so any set of three sequential cells on an orange line contains a low digit a one two or a three a middle digit a four five or a six and a high digit a seven eight or nine so this is a bit like what we looked at the day uh, the other day on a puzzle by full deck and missing a few cards which was an i think i called it the modular miracle sudoku it was an amazing puzzle and you had lines in that that had to have i think you had to have a one four seven and a two five eight and a three six nine or something this is slightly different it's one two three four five six and seven eight nine but it works the same way and i've reminded myself actually there were some comments on that video where people didn't understand the sort of sequential nature so let's just talk about that in the context of this line here now whatever this cell is we don't know what that cell is i'll make it yellow we don't know whether it's low middling or high but we do know that this cell therefore couldn't be low middle or high because then there would be two cells the same in a three cell sequence and that's not allowed so this digit has to be different from yellow let's make it green and then this digit has to be different from yellow and green to ensure that we've got one of each size if you like we've got a low a medium and a high in three sequential cells now the, the point that confused some people was they said okay but how do you know what's in those three cells and the answer is you do actually if you think about it because this is another sequential set of three cells along the line so it must have one of each color so as, as this set has got a green and a blue digit that's got to be yellow that sequence has not got a green so needs one this sequence has not got a blue so needs one and that sequence has not got a yellow so that means we must have a yellow here so that is how the entropy rule works um, and hopefully that's understandable um, now there's one more rule which is that digits on a purple line form a set of non-repeating consecutive numbers which can appear in any order so imagine we worked out that cell was not a gray cell it was a one if this cell was a one this purple line would have to contain a sequence of consecutive digits so it has to have one two three four and five on it and they can be in any order so we could have five four two three something like that that would be a legitimate way of filling the purple line now do have a go at the puzzle the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking and see how math pesto has managed to achieve this regularity i'm tempted to start i'm always tempted to start with quadruple clues when i'm giving them i can see some things here look there must be a three and an eight in that two by two and there must be a three and an eight in that two by two so the question i'm wondering about is where does three where do three and eight go in row one well they can't go in those cells and they can't go in those cells so they've got to go in those cells so two of these three cells are three and eight there's got to be an eight in one of those cells because the eight in column nine must be in these three cells using exactly the same principle there's got to be a seven look in one of those cells using the same principle um, now the only other thing i'm seeing as repeated is nine but nine these nines are a bit weird aren't they because they're sort of crossing into four boxes at a time so i can't sort of do the same trick that i was just doing with like the threes the sevens and the eights so maybe we'll start with the purple line up here because that's quite a long purple line it's seven cells so that means right so imagine that we lined up the digits one to nine against a wall and we took a slice of seven consecutive cells well if we started at the beginning of the line with the one we would take the digits one to seven and if we started at the other end of the line at the nine we'd take the digits three to nine so that means that there's always on this this Renban line there's always the digits three four five six and seven however we slice it and that is rather pretty because where are the three and the six on this line there must be a three and a six and because of this three six eight triple or quadruple well is it a triple or a quadruple i suppose it's oh, it's neither really it's a three six pair that must exist in this foursome well these cells can't be three and six 
so the 3 and the 6 on the purple line have to be in the wing cells there. And that means this cell is not an 8, I suppose. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, this is there. It's very cute. It's very cute immediately. Because now, where's 8 in this box, in, the mid in this box here? Well, it's not on the purple line, because it's got to be in this quadruple. Now, if 8 isn't on the purple line, what else is not on that purple line? It can't have 9 on it either. Because if it has 9 on it, it must have 8 on it, and it can't. So those squares are 3, 6, 8, and 9. And these squares around the Ren ban are therefore 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7. And then we can do entropy maybe on these three. This is, yeah, this is a set of three consecutive digits on an entropy line. So there must, one of these digits has to be low. Well, it must be a three. One of the digits has to be middly. Well, it's going to have to be a six. And the other digit will have to be an high, which will be eight or nine, but not. Okay, so that digit is not three or six. So this is eight or nine. Oh, nearly. And we can nearly... Nah, can we get... I can't... Um, mm, no, maybe I can't do it. I was wondering about nines. So nine in this quadruple is... Well, there is a nine in that quadruple of cells. There is a nine in that quadruple of cells. And there is a nine in that quadruple of cells. So the way to think about this is to ask facetious questions like... How many nine? If we correctly finish this puzzle, how many nines would we find in row three of it? It's not a trick question. The answer is one. There will only be one nine in row three. Now, how many nines will there be in row four? There will be one nine. So in these two rows together, there should be exactly two nines. But we know there's at least one nine in that blue sequence, and there's at least one nine in that blue sequence. So the two nines that we know exist in these two rows are exactly in those eight cells. Now that means this cell cannot be a nine, because if that cell was a nine, it would be a third nine in just two rows of the grid, and that will break the rules of Sudoku. And exactly the same logic, look, is applying in the columns here. There's going to be two nines in those eight cells, so that cannot be a third nine in these two columns. But I was hoping that was going to give me the 9 in here. But I don't think it does, because this cell does not see these blue, the bluish, or the the bluity that we've got going on. So, I'm not sure. I mean, if that was a 9, no, we couldn't even use the entropy then. This would be a 3-6 pair. So this would have the same entropy as this. Yeah, no, I don't think that's the way to think about this, is it? Um, oh dear, so now we're getting stuck already, which is disappointing. Let us, instead of getting stuck, think about... I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to look at the entropy lines. I don't do enough entropy lines to know how they work. I think I'm going to look at German whispers lines instead. So let's look at this line. This line. Well, OK, there are some secrets about German whispers lines. So maybe I should tell you those. Um, in fact, we're not going to. Yes, we're not going to be able to talk about the actual secret of Sudoku today, are we? Because this puzzle involves no mathematics. No, all the rules are just sudoku -y rules. Yeah, so we haven't got any mathematical rules. So we don't need the actual secret. We just need the green line secret. Now, the green line secret is that you cannot put five on a green line. And that's because if you try, the next digit becomes impossible because it's either got to be five, well, it's got to be at least five less than five, which is zero or negative, or at least five more than five, which is 10 or higher. Those are not valid sudoku digits. So you can't put five on a green line, which actually means five in that box has got to be in one of those cells, I'm just seeing. So there is a five and a seven in here. 
But let's come back to the green line because there's one more thing we can say about green lines and that is that they oscillate in polarity. Now what do I mean by that? Well let's, let's think about this digit. If that digit is a low number, i.e. a less than 5 number, what's this digit? And the answer is a greater than 5 number because even if we make this as low as we can and we only add the minimum to it, which would be 5, we still slip the other side of the 5 and become a 6. So then this digit would have to be, again, 5 lower than 6, because it can't be 5 higher than 6. So it would be the... It would be a 1. In fact, that can't... Ah, OK. <laughs> All right, I've spotted something here, which is quite quite cool. But, but, but what that means is that now, uh, this is lovely. What that means is that the line keeps oscillating up and down, or down and up, dep depending on whether this digit is high or not. But what I just noticed when I was doing the example is that the digits 4 and 6 are normally quite difficult on green lines. And that's because 4 and 6 only have one natural partner on a green line. If you put 4 on the green line, what do you have to put next to it? Well, you have to put 9 because you need a digit that's five away. But you can't put four here, or here, or here, or here, or here, because when you surround it and flank it with nines, you're breaking Sudoku. So you can't put, and the same is true of six, you can't put fours or sixes in those cells. And that means in this box, those cells are actually a quadruple on five, seven, four, and six, which well, in the context of the Renban line, the purple line is probably not very surprising because we know that this line is a sequence and 4, 5, 6 and 7 are very close to each other in sequential terms. 2 and 9 have to now go in those in this triomino because you can't put 2 or 9 in that cell. Ah, ah, better than that, right. Look at this box. What are those digits? And the answer is 1, 2, 3, 8, 9. But we've got oscillating polarity going on. So that digit has the same polarity as that digit, has the same polarity as that digit. So these three digits here, which we will make grey, um, those three digits are either all high or all low. Well, they can't all be high because only 8 and 9 are the high digits available, so they've all got to be low, which means they are a 1, 2, 3 triple. These are an 8, 9 pair. Though these digits, therefore, that one and that one are also high, so they're from 6, 7, 8 and 9. Um, and... Um... <laughs> And, no, come on, that means that he says his mouth writing checks his brain can't cash. Uh, it means that, how can I not do this? Come on, what does this mean? It means that, ah, I don't think it means anything. Oh, that's very annoying. Math pesto, what trick are you, are you up to here? Hang on, hang on, hang on. This line is basically done. So I can't, I can't see how to do it. Oh, that's infuriating. Sorry, no, I've got nothing there. Um, is it? Oh, I know what it might be. Nines, of course, can't go there. That would be a third nine using the blue T here that we've got going on. So that's six, seven, or eight, which doesn't actually restrict this cell at all. Okie dokie then. So is it this box then? Well, maybe it is. Seven and eight in this quadruple are interesting. Because if, if the 7 and the 8 are on the green line, because of oscillating polarity, they couldn't be in a domino. They'd have to have a gap between them for a low digit, and that would mean these would have to be the 7 and the 8. 
So if the 7 and the 8 are on the line, they are definitely in those two cells, and that's definitely low. And if the 7 and 8 are not on the line, that would be a 7 or an 8. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. I've just realised what I've done. Oh, my goodness me. Right. Okay. <laughs> I am s <laughs> this, is, this is so impressive. Right. We're going to do an Agat Mator style. Now, I am telling you, you can write a digit straight away into this box. If you can see how to do it, if you can't see how to do it, pause the video. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. I didn't manage to do it until I suddenly realized what was going on here. Right. There is a seven and eight in those cells. Look at this entropy line here. In these three cells, we know that there is a low digit, a medium digit, and a high digit. We don't know what the order is, but then one of these has to be a high digit. Well, it's, but that high digit is not seven or eight. So it's a nine. There is definitely a nine in one of those three cells. But I can apply that identical logic to those three cells, which must include a high digit that can't be seven or eight. So those three also need a nine in them. And there's only one cell which meets both of those criteria. So that's a nine. I'm so sorry. I just hadn't looked at this box. Um, ah, but that nine is giving me stuff. Look, oh, this is eight. This is nine. So that's not nine anymore. This is not eight anymore. That's interesting. Okay, this digit is now six or seven, so that can't be three because five different from three is at least eight. Oh, this is beautiful. Now I've got a three. In this triple of one, two, three, the three is on the left-hand side here, which looks at that cell, which makes that, makes that a six, which by the medium of purpleness makes that a three. Oh, this is just gorgeous. Now that being a six means that's not a six. So this is seven or eight, but it can be either, I think, and go with a one, two or a three. Um, now, oh, I see. Oh, this is it's really, this is quality already, isn't it? Because look, Remember, in each set of three digits on an orange line, you've got to have one of each digit. So if we look at this set, one of these is medium and one of these is low. Then look at this set. Well, if one of these is medium and one of these is low, that one, to complete the set, needs to be the same entropy as this. So that's got to be high and it can't be eight or nine, so it's seven. And that means this is six. Six can only next go next to one on a whisper. Oh, this is love. It's just, it's stunning. Now I've got two coming out of these cells. Do I know what this is now? No, I don't think so. I've got two horizontally in row one. I've got one here, so this is not a one. I've got eight here, so these are not eight. So Oh no, I thought I was going to get eight then. But eight in this box is in this domino. So eight in box four is in this domino. And that means that... What does that mean? I don't know. Seven. Oh, okay. Well, one of these digits has to be a low digit because we need we need a low digit in each string of three on an entropy line and that low digit can't be a one so there is a two or a three in one of these which means that square can't be a two or a three so that's a four or a five So, ah, yeah, okay, so that's the same. Right, so this digit, this digit, and this digit are all high digits. So this one can't be nine. That's got to be seven or eight. Which means I've got a seven, eight pair in row six. Which means that... Hmm, I 
don't know what that means. Uh, bobbins. Okay, so instead of that, we shall say. Do I know what these are now? I don't think so. Do I know what? Oh, I know something I know. There's got to be a one in one of those cells. Because this is an entropy line and it sees a three and a two. So one of these, oh, in fact, yeah, in fact, no, not that, not those four digits. Let's just fix the first three because any set of three digits on entropy must have a low digit in it. So one of these digits is low and it's not a three and it's not a two. So there's a one in one of those, which means there's no one in those two cells, which means there's a one vertically in this box, which... Uh, doesn't actually tell me the nature of the world. So, oh, I see. Oh, good grief. This is really clever. This is really clever stuff. Right, okay. So remember this line. Well, this line's got exactly the same property, i.e. those three cells are the same entropy on this line. So those three digits, let's make them yellow, have to be the same highness or lowness. Well, let's look at this cell, because this is the key, I think. This cell here cannot be low, because if it's low, we know this digit has no fill, because we'd have four low digits, four digits in row one that have to be from one, two, and three. So that's not low, but it's also not able to be high because if it's high, it can't be nine. So it's going to be a set. Those two cells would have to be a seven, eight pair. And those three cells would all have to be selected from seven and eight. That doesn't work. So these two cells can't be high. And that, well, this cell basically can't be low and it can't be high. So it is middly. So that's a middly digit. That's a middly digit. That's a middly digit. That's not eight anymore. That's eight there. That's not eight anymore. So, oh, okay. Well, I don't know what that's doing, except I can now ask where eight goes in this row because it can't go in those three and it can't go in those three and it can't actually go in that cell by Sudoku. So that means there's an eight in one of these two, which is about as useful as a chocolate teapot. <laughs> um, so now we've got three, you can't put three and eight on a three, four, five, six. No, you can't. Right, you can't put three and eight on a on a uh, on a renban five a length five renban because if you put three on it you can't get to eight with a consecutive sequence of cells or digits so that means if you can't put three and eight on the purple line that cell is three or eight um do we know which it is answer is I don't know I'm afraid we could we know we've got to have a low and I've got to have a low and a high in there and the the low we know is a, all right we know there's a one in one of those two cells because there must be a low digit and it's not a two or a three so there's a one in one of those two and Oh, no. No, I'm wrong. <laughs> Ignore me. What about... Hmm. Oh, okay. Let's do this differently then. Oh, no, this is beautiful. This is... I know what those two cells are. I know exactly what they are. By entropy. Because these digits must include a low digit. 
Well, that low digit is not 1, which is there, and it's not 3, which is in there, so it's 2. And then, let's go further than that and say, well, what's the high digit that must be in these two cells? Because remember, these are medium, so there's got to be a high in here. Well, it's not 8, which is over there, and it's not 9, so it's 7. So that's a 2-7 pair, which means this cell is an 8. That is absolutely beautiful. So that cell's a 7. 7 can't go next to 3 on a German whispers line because it's not 5 away. So that's th that's 3 in the corner. That's 3 in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, 7 is not up there. So this is a 1, 4, f oh, we must know that digit. That's an 8. Because this is a 1, 4, 5 triple. So those squares are a 2, 7 pair, I want to say. We, uh, now I've got a four, five, six triple in row one out of nowhere. So these two squares have to be one and nine, I think. So now, do I know? Do I know what goes on this Renban? It's it's not got one, two, seven, or nine. It might have eight on it, but it might not. No, uh, I think there's something going on between these boxes and hang on, let me just think about this for a moment. Um, do I know anything? There's got to be, right, there's got to be a low digit in these two cells and it's not a two. So there's a one or a three in those cells. Ah, okay, in the bottom row, there's a 2 in one of those cells. Because there must be a low digit on this entropy. Well, also by Sudoku, just simple Sudoku. So now, so now if this was a 7-8 pair, this can't be a 2, and it can't be a 4, and it can't be a 3. That would have to be a 1. If this is a 7-8 pair, that has to be a 1, because nothing else can go between it and, and without breaking it. If this was a 3, it wouldn't be 5 away from the 7. So why can't this be a 1? That would make this a 1 and this a 9, and there'll be a 9 over here. Oh! one and nine have to be in those cells because they can't be here around this blue two by two area so if that was eight this would have to be a one nine pair which would give me a one nine pair in column seven there's loads and loads of little rinky dinks going on oh that can't be six look I'm not sure if Wayne distinguishes between my oohs and my ahs. Um, I hope not. <laughs> uh, okay, so what do we do next? We should have a look at... Do we know the entropy of this one now? We know that we've got... No, this was the one we looked at before, right at the start, didn't we? I didn't know which of those was nine. Now I've got an eight in one of these. If that's an eight, that's got to be high, which means it's got to be nine, because it can't be seven, eight. Um, oh, and it can't be, oh, it can't be nine. It can't be nine, that's it. Right, this is it. Okay, look at this end, look at this line. This, we know there's an eight in one of these two squares. If this is eight, the third cell along from it must be high, which means it's a seven, eight or a nine, but this cannot be nine because of the blues. We know that this would be a third nine in these two rows. So this is great because that means that this is not eight, which means this is eight. And I think that means that this is nine because the nine was in one of those two cells and we've just fit, filled the other one with an eight. So that's nine, this is eight. This is three, which is almost certainly going to put some sort of pressure on this Renban line. Oh, look, no, no, this is three. So this is six. This is three. 
this is not six down here and now now we can do entropy on this line look because that digit's low which is one two or three i think can it be three it can be we can repeat digits can't we let me just check the rules any set of three sequential cells contains yeah okay there's nothing to say you can't repeat digits on a on an entropy line so this digit has to be middly and could be four five or six i think no not six it can't be six because of this six so this is four or five um that means what that means that i don't know <laughs> i don't know what that means eight ah eight is on the renban oh this is right this is this is beautiful okay eight is on this renban line the purple line here can it have a nine on it no it can't because of this nine nine is ruled out of those and nine is ruled out of these by the blue so there's no nine on it but there is an eight on it so it's eight seven six eight seven six five four is what we're putting on this line so okay so where does the seven go on this line it's not there because of the two seven pair and it's not there because of the seven in the column so that's a seven i want to say which means there's a seven in the middle box. Uh, seven in this has got to be in one of those two now, which is very interesting, but not quite interesting enough. If we get the seven here, we would be okay. Right, let's come back to this line then. So this line is four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let, let's actually just fill it in. Four, five, six, and eight. And what's left? Eight can't go here. Ah, those cells are a four, five, six, eight quadruple, which means that cell is a one. It can't be four or five. So we've got a four, five pair here. This square is a two or a seven to complete this row. Four, five, and along this quadruple, the six and the eight have to be in this section. Now that means if six and an eight are appearing on the purple line in these three cells, they can't appear there. So that's not able to be six. So that's a four, five pair now in row three. one two so these squares are from one two seven and nine and that's not a seven um bother okay so now we're going to say that this is intricate as well isn't it it amuses me sometimes that this this part the sort this sort of puzzle gets three stars out of five for difficulty on logic master germany i mean i've been slaving away on it now for nearly 40 minutes and it's been fascinating and very clever but it has not felt like a medium difficulty puzzle at all and i've still got barely half one well, i've probably got barely a third of the numbers in um well, <laughs> i don't know where to look now i'm going to look at can I get the entropy of these cells? I know that one of these cells is low, so it's a one or a three. Two of these cells are medium, but I don't think I know the order. Oh, of course, it's the same thing as this. Oh, ah, right. Yeah, this is mighty. This is absolutely mighty. Right, look at these two dominoes. Now, what do we know from a middle digit perspective we have in these cells? The answer is we've got, we can only have one middle digit here and we can only have one middle digit there because we need to have low digits also in these two dominoes. So that means I've still got to put a middle digit in this box, a four, five or a six. 
but 4, 5 and 6 can't go on these sort of right-angled green lines unless they are at the very edge because if you try and put 4 here you've got to flank it with double 9 if you try and put 6 here you've got to flank it with double 1 it just doesn't work so that means that cell is not 7 that is 4, 5 or 6 which means this cell is 7 and now where do we put 8 in this quadruple it can't go next to 7 on the whisper because of oscillating polarity so it goes here um, which means that seems to have to be an 8 by the power of Sudoku outrageous of Mathpesto to make me do Sudoku in his Sudoku puzzle 7 is not in those cells now so and this has got to be a low number and it's got to be capable of being next to a 7 on a whisper so, oh this is lovely <laughs> so it's 1 or 2 and it can't be 2 because 2 has to go there so this is 1 which means that's 1 that's 9 that's 1 9 is in one of those three cells by Sudoku um, 1 is in one of these three cells by Sudoku and 3 has to be in one of these two cells now for what it's worth which means 3 is in one of those two cells oh and now we can give some options look to these green line digits so this digit has to be 2 or 3 because it can't be it's got to be at least 5 away from 8 and it can't be 1 so 2 or 3 can we do better than that don't think so that digit has to be a 2 in fact because it's got to be 5 away from 7 and it can't be 1 so that's a 2 which means that's not a 2 which means that that's not a 2 oh this is gorgeous good grief right look at this where does the 2 go in this quadruple and the answer is I haven't got a Scooby-Doo except I know it's in one of those two cells because it can't be here now if there's a 2 in one of those two cells it's looking at that which now must be a 3 and that does oh, I was going to say it does diddly squat but it does do something there's a 3 now in one of those two cells by Sudoku and I guess we have to pencil mark these cells on this Remban now because I, I've used all the other clues. It's either that or the quadruple clues that are going to get me out of trouble here. Um, or it's Sudoku that's going to get me out of trouble. That's the other thing that can get me out. Eight. Where does eight go in this box? So Sudoku is actually what's going to get me out of trouble. Now this is an eight. That means this is an eight in the middle box. The 1, 9 quadruple clue needs to have a 1 and a 9 in its quadruple. So that's, that cell is a 9 because it can't be a 1. So that's a 9. Therefore, that is a 1. Therefore, this is not a 1. Um, is, this, is this what we were looking for to crack the puzzle? I don't know. Oh, look, 9 has got to be in this blue cell sequence. It can only go there now. 9 has to go in this blue sequence, so it can only go there now. So now we know that's the 2. That's the only place 2 can go in this quadruple. So that's a little bit of a win. Um, and for our next trick, we will say that... Or well, maybe we look at the Remban now. We've got 8 on it. And we can't have 9 on it. This cannot be a 9. So we know that this Remban is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. That's what it is. So that square is a 4 or a 5 because it can't be a 6 or a 7. So now I've got a 4, 5 pair here, which means this is a 7. That's a 6 on the Remban. That's a 7. That's a 2. So this is not a 2. So in this column we need, or we need to put a 1 in this column, it's got to go here. So that's got to be a 3. 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 And that's given us the entropy of this line. That's got to be a low digit. So that's the 2. These have got to be middly digits. Um, 
that can't be six. The six in this tri in this box is definitely in one of those two cells, so it's not here. Um, whoops, and that's not so. Oh, see, this is four or five. That's four or five. Um, okay, so how do we finish this off now? He says, staring desperately at the grid. Uh, that cell is a four or a five again. So these two squares are a one nine pair, I see. So that's nine by Sudoku. That's one. Nine in the middle box is, is done. It's got to go there. There are four nines looking at the middle box. Okay, that's fine. I was looking at these pencil mark nines and getting confused, but I'd actually already put the nine in box six already so that's fair enough now where does two oh yeah where does two go in this row it's got to go there so that's you've guessed it a four or a five so where does seven go in this column seems to have to go here which is a bit weird but okay we'll put that in so seven is oh no i've got a... oh no it might be okay i've suddenly noticed i've got a two seven deadly pattern but ah of course when i got the one nine here i could have used entropy this digit is three away from this so it must have the same entropy so that's two that's two that's seven that's seven and that gets around that deadly pattern um that's not eight what's this digit then that digit is four five or six by sudoku Ah, I've got a four five pair in this column. So that's a six. That's a four five pair. This is a six, therefore. So that's not a six. This this should be a right in this digit. That has got to be a two by Sudoku. How many twos have we got? All of them. How oh that's a six by Sudoku. It sees a four five pair in the column. I'm getting a bit worried about the fours and the fives here. We seem to be running into a whole truckload of them. Where does... What's going on over here? We need to put fours, fives and sixes into these squares. That's another triple here. Where does one go? I see. So one is there. Oh, so this digit's a writing. That's got to be a six by Sudoku, which means that's a six by Sudoku. Oh dear, dear, dear. I've got loads of fours and fives everywhere. Hang on, is that all I've got left? So it's going to be... Um, no, it's not going to be entropy. What, what have I done wrong? It's got to be one of these quadruple clues, I think. Oh, I know what it's going to be. I know what it's going to be. I bet these have to be the same. Oh, that would be that would be so cool if this is how this finishes. Um, right, let me just get rid of the colours, actually. So, Control a colour. Now, what I'm thinking is, you see this four quadruple? I've not used that clue yet. So, if I can prove those two have to be the same digit, they couldn't both be five, because then you wouldn't put four in the quadruple. So let's just see if we can do this now. So if that's four or five, we'll make, that is clearly not the yellow one. So that's the blue one. That's going to be a yellow one. That's going to be a yellow one. I need to get this one. Um, that's going to be a yellow one. That's going to be a blue one. And that's going to be it. That's it. We've done it. This is, in fact, let's carry on. Let's carry on because this is going to be exciting. Um, but I can see how the puzzle's finishing now. That's got to be a blue one. That's got to be a yellow one. That's got to be yellow. That's going to be blue. This has got to be blue. This has got to be yellow. That's got to be blue. And that's got to be blue. And I think that's all of them highlighted. So yeah. So if we look around here, if we made if we made yellow five, the four clue would be broken. So actually, we know that yellow must be four, 
and blue must be five. And then we can click tick and that's how to solve the puzzle. Isn't that beautiful? What a stunning, stunning Sudoku. Math pesto, take a bow. That And, and actually there was a whole load of different sorts of logic in that. That was, it felt like a very dense experience. Dense not as in thick, but dense as in packed with a lot of clever logic. Um, right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for putting up with all my cliches. I hope they weren't too onerous today. And do let me know in the comments how you got on with the puzzle. I do enjoy them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.